Welcome everybody to another episode of the New Artist Spotlight podcast. I am Wilco Wilkes and I believe Origin Cross is still um, wrapped up in moving house. Um, I don't know what that guy thinks his priorities are, but he's not <laughs> here again today. Um, but we do have a very exciting episode for you. So um, we've got Stephanie, one half of Synthetic Blonde. How are you doing? I'm really good. How are you, Wilco? I'm good, yeah. It's nice to meet you finally. Uh, yeah, face to face. Yeah, yeah. Seen, seen that face many times before on my Instagram <laughs> feed and um, in the UI Spotlight Discord and here, there and everywhere. Um, so yeah, tell, tell us about yourself in your own words. Oh gosh, I guess um, I've been doing music since as far back as I can remember. I come from like a very strange family who is, uh, we all seem to sort of be gifted in the arts. Most of my aunts, uncles, cousins, we all have one artistic ability, ability, excuse me, or another. So like, I also paint, right? Um, so yeah, right from, from a young age, I've just been immersed in music for some crazy reason. I could, uh, I could read sheet music when I was five years old. So I just, I taught myself on the old foot pedal organ, um, which is important because, Later in life, it translated to being able to pick on the guitar and play drums with my feet, right? Um, and yeah, just always had a strong passion for the arts um, and knew that as a young child, I wanted to do something in the field of music and performing arts and just always pushed pushed ahead to do that. So, yeah. So what, so, um, what did you do before Synthetic Blonde then? Uh, well, I am a music teacher in an elementary school, K-8. to So I don't just teach music. It's the arts ed program, but I teach music every class. And then we do dance. We do drama. Uh, I recently designed some arts ed centers, learning centers. So they're like learning stations where kids are given a prompt and full creative expression in there to like let their imaginations like run with it because art should be about expressing and a safe place to find their voice. So yeah, I've been teaching now 14 years, which makes me sound really old. But um, in addition to that, I did a lot of community theater, um, a lot of volunteer, like Christmas dinners, I would go sing. I was trained in classical singing. So I, <laughs> I'm i not an opera singer, but I did do a lot of singing in Latin and, and Italian and German and um, used to perform like Ave Maria, the Gunud version every Christmas and stuff like that. So just kind of dabbling in and around things. So well, a proper musician on our hands then. <laughs> oh, yeah. I fake it well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what everyone says. Yeah. That's what, that's what all, the, all the top guys say anyway, you know. Uh, right. Yeah, that's class. Um, yeah, that's amazing. I, I, I do a bit of community work as well with young people. And um, like, like you say, it's all about self-expression and right. you know, kind of not having to be the best, but just enjoying it. And I think right. in your music, well, not, not about not having to be the best, but the enjoying it part, like, um, yes. yeah, definitely love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I try to, uh, to, I work in a, in a very, um, tough community, a lot of, uh, a lot of needs, a lot of sad stories. I tried to make my room a safe space, you know, obviously mm. with limitations of, you know, you can't go full expression if you're having a bad day, but, but a safe space to maybe channel some of those emotions and find their, their voice and what works for them. And I always tell them, I don't care how well it looks, what the finished product looks like. I want to see your process, right? Like, what are you doing? How are you exploring? How are you channeling um, your energies and pushing yourself to be better, right? So. it's yeah, awesome. Yeah. So yeah. let's talk about the background as well, because I always like to ask people about their rooms where they've set up. Is that an Evanescence songbook on the... Uh... Oh, yeah. So, oh, does this have to be PG? I got to ask. I should have asked at the start. I don't know, you know. I don't think we've got any rules on that. Okay, so full disclosure... I might have had been a little. I might have been a little tipsy when I did some last minute Christmas shopping on Boxing Day. Anyways, and I was in the store and I picked that up. And I love Evanescence. Let me tell you, like I used to have that album on piano, and I would. I don't know where my book went, but I would play. Um, Hello is actually my favorite song by her. It is just like, oh, it's so good. And like a lot of people don't know it; they just know My Immortal. But anyways, I was a little, you know, woohoo, and uh, <laughs> I picked it up, and I, I haven't opened it yet, but uh, 
I'm excited to play it. I've got to do some balancing back there. My record player skips right now. Yeah. (laughs) You're the first content of yourself playing piano and singing. Um, I had it on our old YouTube channel and then I pulled that channel down. Um, you know, when we started doing the synthetic blonde thing, I used a lot of like my established Facebook and my established YouTube. And I realized quickly that was a no, no. So I pulled some of the stuff I wanted to keep. So I do have some, um, I started a brand new YouTube channel. So like when I'm building songs, sometimes I post little clips of that. And then I have some old videos that I kept that I will eventually, eventually when I have time (laughs) upload to our YouTube channel, but on Instagram, there's a couple clips of me playing some stuff. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure I've seen them, but I'll have a look. Uh, They're old. You got to go dig in. Like it's, yeah, that'd be <laughs> to see. Yeah, it's, that's, that's yeah. A, you've got a lot of different things going on. So obviously, we're here to talk about synthetic blondo, um, and you are one half of this. So do you want to tell us a little yes. bit? About- Brad as well, because he's not here to, to represent himself. Right, and he's the better half. So he he really should be here doing the interview and I should just be in the background. But um, yeah, he's incredible. So there would be no synthetic lawn without Brad at all. Absolutely, 100%. So just a little backstory. Um, I was married and I went through a terrible divorce. And part of my healing process of that toxic relationship, which again was one of our albums kind of came out um, some of the songs came out about my my journey through healing on that. But some of the the process of that was learning to stop saying no to things that terrified me. So music was the thing. I actually hadn't performed in 16 years. I had like massive stage anxiety. I had a lot of really horrible things, cataclysmic events that kind of just shut me down. Um, so when my husband left and I was going through that, I was like, no more saying no to the music. I had friends who had come into my life I had six guitars in my room. They're like, you play guitar? I'm like, nope. Um, But I did play guitar. I just was like too afraid to say it. So I started saying yes to things. And somebody asked me to play bass in a Ladies of the 80s band. And so I joined this band. And long story short, that is how I met Brad. I met him auditioning for, he wanted to do a Journey cover band. And I sent him a video audition uh, by request. And little did I know he had uh, started developing feelings for me watching this video and over, over and over again. And a couple months later, when we met face to face, we just, we've been together ever since. So February 8th, 2020, that was our, our thing. And so Brad, you know, he's been this big part of this journey and he has literally ignited or awakened this, I don't know, this creative monster in me. I had sort of written a couple songs prior to meeting him, but they were like bad Hallmark cards. Do you know what I mean? Like cheesy and you're like, Ooh, I don't know about that. Um, and we got together, we were supposed to do this cover band, but he, uh, you know, COVID kind of happened and shut the world down. And he goes, let's write Synthwave. And I'm like, okay, I don't know if I can do that, Brad, right? But I'll try. Like, I've, let's just write Synthwave, right? You know? And uh, so he had to go to work and he goes, write me a song. So I'm like, I don't know how to do that. So, you know, I went to YouTube and put on a drum beat. And anyways, I ended up writing a song and it was not Synthwave. It was very much disco. But he comes home, he goes, oh, I love it. I love it. So Brad... Brad awakened this musical monster because, you know, I wrote this song that was not Synthwave. And uh, and since then, I said, well, Brad, I don't know if I can. He goes, well, just, just do what you're doing, right? Then we wrote another one, Fly With Me, is actually the second wrong song, sorry, second song that uh, we wrote, we wrote it together. And he came up with the chord progression for that. And uh, he's like, now write some lyrics. I'm like, it doesn't work that way, Brad. And then he left and 10 minutes later, I'm like, oh, I have lyrics. Um, So he's been this big, beautiful muse. He is an incredible guitar player. He's highly sought after in our city. Um, He's played guitar for, I don't, the number always changes, but a long time. Um, He established the rock program at Long and McQuaid, which is where he teaches. Uh, He gets hired to go travel, you know, nine hours to play guitars as fill and lead guitar players and rhythm guitar players. He's just, he's incredible. And uh, he... Yeah, he just brings like, he's always like, what did he say? We're hauling oats. I'm oats, I think, right? I don't know which one's which. Oh gosh, I had this. Anyways, but basically he's like, you don't even need me. I'm like, that's so not true. Like 
we wouldn't be Synthetic Blonde without him. He started this whole project. We came up with the band name together. Um, and I, I firmly believe I would still be stuck playing covers, which is, there's nothing against it, right? But I'd be stuck playing covers and, um, you know, not not where we are now if it hadn't yeah, been no, you for can't him. exploring your own style and um you you kind of looking into those parts of your your life that you've never had the the tools or to to do it or the confidence so that's it sounds amazing that you've come out of your shell like that in the last few years yeah confidence for sure and just there's something about like we record sometimes when we're writing together so fly with me for example it was me him and a bottle of captain morgan but anyways we recorded it <laughs> and I watched it the next day. It was a 28 minute, minute video of us building fly with me. And then I thought, Oh, I better listen to that in the morning and see how that sounds. Right. <laughs> but it was actually really, really good. I did a little tweaking and, and then wrote the lyrics, but, um, we just, anybody who's had the pleasure of like watching us, cause sometimes I like invite friends over to hang out so that I can work and still visit and have a social life. And they just like stare at us with their mouths open because it's just, I guess, magical has been described watching us. We have a perfect chemistry. It's yeah, that's yeah. amazing. So you living together <laughs> as well, or yes, well, yeah. mostly. I mean, not officially. He still sends his mail to his apartment, but we're working on that. Right. Yeah. Five yeah. year plan, I think. I don't know. <laughs> no, Brad, get it sorted ASAP. Really. Right. Really right. Nice. You know, Brad, just like a little bit more about him. He is a multi instrument, uh, multi instrumentalist who is that a word? Did I just make that yeah, up? Yeah, multi. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> That's like a mouthful. <laughs> but yeah, he plays a whole ton of instruments as well. He's just, oh, he's so talented. And, you know, he always talks about like one day he'll be as good as the people he admires and ins who inspire him. I'm like, I'm pretty sure you're already there. Like, I'm pretty sure if you got called up on the stage with that person and were to go head to head, you'd be all right. You know? Oh, so yeah, yeah he's, he's incredible. Do you so. play the bagpipes? Uh, I don't know about that one. I'll have to get back to you. Well, yeah. He needs to, he needs to get practicing then. Uh, I'll tell him, I'll tell him, Brad, next instrument, bag cut, yeah, bag yeah, pipes. That's, awesome, that's a really good um, environment for producing new music as well. Like being, in partnership and with a similar love for for the process and for doing it to have right. that and just be at home both of you making new music together that's that's amazing it seems like a a, a golden era yeah it's pretty perfect sometimes I like have these messed up little thoughts you know because my mind's a little a little manic but sometimes I'm like right. am I in a coma like is this actually happening right because it's it's crazy. I just never would have thought in a million years that we'd be here and I would be doing this and with him. Right. So, so in yeah. terms of like all the projects that you've got on then and stuff on the, on the work and music, what sort of, um, what percentage do you think is synthetic blonde in like, in your head, are you like a hundred percent committed that everything you're doing is dedicated to synthetic blonde or is it like you've got other irons in the fire or how's, how's that? Like you mean the time I spent working on music, is it a hundred percent directed towards synthetic blonde or do I have like individual stuff? I guess like, yeah, I guess is that, is this like your main project? I know like, obviously you put in a lot into it cause I can see that, um, from all the stuff that you post and all the, all the music that you've got on Spotify and stuff, you must be pouring a lot into it, but yeah, like, I don't know. Is it, is it like, is it your thing? Is it Brad's thing? Is it, is it when he, when you're both at home together, are you constantly working on it or? Oh yeah. 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 So I guess for me, this is it. The ladies of the eighties band never happened much to my dismay because I, you know, I was looking forward to it, but everything that happened with like the global reset and stuff, right. It just fizzled out and, and people went separate ways, but that's okay because I don't think I would have had the time to commit to both with, um, all the work I do for synthetic blonde brad is in another band it's a cover band it's actually a really popular cover band they travel all over canada to play um dangerous cheese they do like the 80s pop the 80s rock and the 80s hair metal and they have like a cult like following like it's crazy people go nuts um and so it works out well because i do i guess most of the synthetic blonde all the behind the scenes um i do the songwriting on my my roland and I do all the mixing on my, um, and production on my, on my computer. And he just has to show up and record. He uses the Helix Line 6 and records right into the computer. And, uh, and then we send it off to our sound guy to do the final tap it in. I was telling him to 
make it slap a little bit. Right. Um, and so like I have the time I work, uh, full-time Monday to Friday, but I get up early and I do, you know, uh, some production stuff, get posts ready, try to plan things, uh, make my to-do list. And then I go to work, come home and I pretty much work on music most nights. And then he, um, works different hours than I do. So I'll be like, Hey, I need you to come record or Hey, I need you to do this or that. And, and he just kind of makes the time and taps it in. So yeah, it works works. well. Yeah. Yeah, That sounds like you've got a good balance. Um, we're making it work. (laughs) His music equipment with him, or, um, is it like, as soon as he gets back home from being away for a week, you're like, hi Brad, nice to see you. I've got some guitar parts for you to record. Yeah, pretty much. Like, so he takes his helix with him. It's actually, I don't think you can see it. Uh, It's like, no, I can't turn it that far. Anyways, it's on the floor. I will set it up. Um, he just had a gig last night with Dangerous Cheese, so he got in at four in the morning. But um, most of his guitar parts are recorded on our current projects because I lost my voice for three weeks, and it's just coming back now. Um, so we just had to do vocals, which isn't how we normally work, but you know we got to stay on schedule. So we did a flipperoni. But yeah, usually uh, I pack it up for when he has his gigs to go because I'm here, and then when he brings it back, I set it all up for him. So you know, if I want to do some social media promotional recordings, he's ready to go. Um, and then, yeah, when I need him to, I'm like, Hey, I got a new song. Let's put some tasty guitar on there. It's, he just has to sit down and play around with it, but yeah, it's good. Love it. It works. So why did you decide on synthetic blonde as a name? Oh, well, okay. So we were playing with band names. Some initial thoughts were like, well, I don't know if I want to share those. Those are kind of stupid names. That's why we didn't go with them. But uh, he said something about something blonde. I can't remember what it was. I'm like, mm, I'm pretty sure there's already a band with that name, right? And I don't remember who brought up synthetic. This is the problem with like having too much time off during the COVID stuff, right? But one of us came up with it. And then I said, let's spell it with a K because one, it's kind of a plan where it's so like we're doing uh, music with synthesizers. So, you know, yep. synthetic sounds, right? Um, but also knowing that the first album that I was writing was kind of looking at relationships and love and how people um, people don't fully understand. And I'm not saying I'm an expert, but they don't understand what love is. We think a lot of toxic love is love, but it's not love, right? It's like dependency on that person and stuff like that. So like looking at synthetic, synthetic relationships and fake interactions and kind of a social commentary on like the world. And then too, I also, um, I like my little diva things. Like I get my hair done. I really like fake nails, which I don't have right now. Um, but I also kind of like to poke fun at the necessity or the, the feeling that we need those things. So yeah, synthetic with a K kind of a cheeky little play on words and then blonde, which actually worked out to Stephanie and Brad synthetic blonde. And that wasn't planned. It just kind of uh, a yeah, happy little coincidence. So I haven't noticed that either. Um, <laughs> I'm ask you about that because uh, in your Spotify bio, it says synthesized, sexualized, <laughs> the electrifying world of synthetic blonde is a hot, wet fusion of powerful pop melodies and dynamic guitar driven rock. It's, and uh, my question is, um, yeah, but how how well how much of it that is a strategy to kind of turn people's heads and get eyes on the music? Because I think that's a really strong strategy. And like, and 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 my my <laughs> sub question there is: Does it also lead to a lot of kind of unwanted attention and DMs from guys and this, that, and the other? Or um, not so much. And actually, so I I would welcome the DMs because. I used to always also be like an avid online gamer and I don't want to say which games because I'm a bit big part nerd. Um, but I dealt with that culture a lot. So I welcome it. It's kind of entertaining to me. Is that rude? I don't know. <laughs> I don't take it seriously. Right. Like I kind of chuckle. Yeah. So I've had a few mostly on Facebook of weird people reaching out to me. And I mean, if you just look at our profile, it's very clear that I'm not a single woman. Number one, I mean, I'm grabbing Brad's nipples in most of our photos. So, and there's a couple like junk grabs too. So, um, but also it's also to warn people that when you click on one of our songs, like it's going to be suggestive and it's going to be very like raw and very edgy and very truthful, right? Like I'm calling it like it is. I'm not. Yeah, that's good. You know, I like that. 
Yeah. 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 So people should know what they're getting into when they like, I don't want it to look all wholesome. And then they click on waiting. I mean, if you've listened to the words for that song, it's filthy, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and so. do you want to know? Like, that's a that's a filthy song. So yeah, there's really quite a filthy. Lot of filthy songs on there. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. New addiction. Um, hello. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, it's like yeah, just a little bit of a foreshadowing of things to come. So yeah, yeah, that's good though. That's good. Um, and so that brings us nicely onto the video that we're going to play as well um, today, Yay. which itself is a um, quite a, a saucy number isn't it um, it is i was gonna mention um brad's pecs on display um but <laughs> yeah tell, tell us about the video i watched it um very hot under the collar after watching that you know but <laughs> <laughs> okay can i i'm gonna read something if that's okay Definitely, um okay yeah. so the video the video where did i okay so because um Number one, I have to um, I have to give a shout out to Creative Sask, who gave me the market and export grant, which was money um, to help produce and film that that video. So big thanks to them. But I want to read uh, what the filmmaker actually said. So Saskatchewan filmmaker Aaron Sinclair, he's highly sought after here. Uh, this is what he said about the the project, I guess, when he was first approached by us. Dreams of You felt like the perfect opportunity to really dive into an 80s melodrama vibe on the video. I was influenced by classic music videos and movies, and I wanted to keep those themes evident in everything from the costumes to the camera movements. It really felt like everyone involved got to indulge in the concept, and there was a really playful vibe on set. So that's from Aaron Sinclair. So when we approached him to do it, I... Told I actually sent him three songs. I said, we'd like to look at working with you. And I said, here's three songs. Pick whichever one jumps out at you with the most, you know, visuals and, and tell us what you see. And so he picked Dreams of You and he sent us the treatment and I was instantly in love. It was like fishnets and like uh, total eclipse of the heart snippets and like talking about steamy shower scenes. I'm like, yes, yes, yes. And then he asked me, about why I wrote the song and if his visuals sort of match. I'm like, absolutely, right? So, yeah. Did I answer your question? <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, it's it's, like a, it's, it looks like it could be uh, like a classic 80s. Song. Yes, it's um, straight, it's it straight like nostalgia. Amazing. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, it's Yeah, great. he did an amazing job. So Okay, let, let's watch it then. So okay. do you want to give the big introduction? Yeah, sure. Okay, so this is uh, Dreams of You. Uh, first official music video for Synthetic Blonde made possible by Creative Saskatchewan's Market and Expert Grant, filmed and produced by Aaron Sinclair Films. Thank you. 
Yeah, thank you for letting us play that. Really enjoyed it again. Um, and uh, yeah, like I was saying, it, it could be a it could be a classic eighties hit. And um, do you is it hard not to play with um, kind of other things that might um, change the sound a little bit? Because I find myself sometimes I might start off intending to do an eighties track, then I get caught up in all the um, sort of new samples or this, that, and the other, and right a little bit. So you you clearly kind of finished a lot of your work with a specific style in mind. And I think you're quite good at doing that. Yeah, truthfully, I actually, okay, so it's purely fluke. Um, Because as I said, I set out to write Synthwave. And for the first seven or eight songs, I was still trying to write Synthwave. And they kept coming out as this like... 80s disco with like kind of a hard rock EDM sort of thing going on. And I was like, F it. Like I give up. I just, I'm like, Brad, I don't think I can write synthwave. Like I was raised on classic rock and disco and 80s music. So it's just, it's coming out of me, right? Like I, I kept trying. I could actually, our latest release is probably the closest song to synthwave that I could have done, right? Um, in Drive All Night. But yeah, so it's actually a fluke. And then I listened to some songs and I'm like, this one doesn't sound 80s. And I put it out there. I'm like, this has totally got like a 90s. So, you know, like early to mid 90s sort of thing. People are like, man, this sounds so 80s. I'm like, what? <laughs> I don't, I don't hear it. But um, uh, I kind of just... influences a lot in the, in the 80s or like who are your favorite bands of all time and um, so I really, really love Doobie Brothers, uh, Donna Summer. Um, yeah, Donna Summer, I can hear a lot of that. In, in, <laughs> yeah. Um, Madonna, Madonna and Whitney Houston were kind of like, I used to sing karaoke on my driveway and like drive my neighbors crazy when I was like seven years old. I got a machine for Christmas and it was all like, um, the Carpenters, Vanessa Williams, Whitney Houston, Madonna, just, just Belton. Um, and so I grew up on a lot of the, I guess the greats from the eighties, but my dad um, used to drive this beat up old truck and he would listen to 62 Cool, which is the AM channel. And it was all classic rock. So like Eagles and um, Doobie Brothers, Three Dog Night, uh, CCR, you know, Zeppelin. And I'm just listening to all of this. So I have this love for kind of all of it. And I guess when I, when I write the songs, I don't really, I just kind of let them write themselves. Like I might have the progression, but then the sounds in terms of the sounds, I like keep playing until I'm like, that's it right there. So it's yeah, more like an experimental play thing. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I was having a discussion with Charles Connolly actually earlier on, um, uh, maybe about a week ago, I got him to sort of finish off the mixing on one of my songs and it's a six minute long song. And I was saying to him, um, I know people have been saying that you should only write songs that are like three minutes long, um, but this one needs to be six minutes. And he was like, yeah, a song should be as long as, as long as it needs to be. Right. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's, it's good. Not, I think there's a trend going for, going with a lot of new artists as well, where they're trying to write music that will be popular or the, the, the kind of the cookie cutter songs that major labels are releasing as well kind of skews that. So it's nice to, it's nice to hear an artist like yourself where you've got a, a clear style and it's actually really like, that's a question I was going to ask you, actually. <laughs> I, I think it's really good music to have on, like, while working or, like, in the car. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I was going to ask you what you think is the best situation for somebody to listen to your music. Road trips. Like, just general? Like, like the whole catalogue? Road trips. Yeah. I think our music is great. Like, we travel to the mountains a lot. I want to move west, uh, you know, either Alberta or BC. And so every time we go west, we have, like, our road trip playlist with a lot of indie uh, artists from from the NAS community and other communities that I found. And we, like, have a spattering of our songs in there. And it's just like, it's like, man, this, this song is great with the mountains. Man, this song is great with the mountains. Oh, man, this song is really, really good with these mountains in the background. And so, like, Jen, Generally, because the vibes sort of change depending on which song you're listening to, but it's just like consistently good on on road trips. Whereas, you know, if you're working out, there's a handful of our tracks that would be good for that. You know, yeah, or walking. Yeah, yeah that's good. You've done quite a lot of collabs as well, haven't you? Um, yeah. So we've done. So we had a spontaneous Christmas collab with the Safety Word and Vinny. Vinny Hunter Cruz. Um, and so we put out the last Christmas, we had two versions of Synthwave and the Retrowave, and that was a lot of fun. It was kind of like 
I think they messaged me on Sunday. They're like, you want to do this collab? And I'm like, sure. And then we had this music back to them by Tuesday and we released it by like the weekend. It was crazy. It was like this whirlwind romance of a collab. But, um, and then I had met an artist down South and I did bad girl collab. It's like a hip hop. And that was a fun challenge because, uh, <laughs> hip hop, um, uh, writing in a totally different genre. But like when I was, you know, in my younger years, I listened to a lot of like hardcore gangster rap, <laughs> like hardcore. So I do have a passion for that, uh, hip hop rap genre. And so it was fun to kind of test test the waters in there. Um, and then we have another collab in the works right now, but I think it's a secret, so I can't say anything, but you'll find out. <laughs> right. We'll look forward to that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's good as well. You, you, you got, like, it comes back to the confidence thing that we were saying earlier on is like, maybe you wouldn't have even attempted to write anything on a hip hop track a few years ago, but now it's like you, now that you've done this synthetic blonde and all the experiences you've had in the last three, four years, um, you've got that evidence that you can do anything that you want really. Even, uh, you can put anything that you put your mind to. For sure. For sure. I mean, I might've tried it, but only my cats would have heard it, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're our biggest fans. Yeah, yeah. They're always hanging out, but yeah. I, I, halfway across I used, the world. <laughs> right. I used to, I used to joke that I'm the living room rock star, you know, yeah, everybody yeah. leaves the house and I close the doors and I just send it. And then people come home and I'd be like, ah, hi. <laughs> Just mopping. But do you yeah. Play, do you play live at all and and how's the local music scene where you are? Um, yes. So we started with home concerts in our house because we're so because we're two piece, it's tricky for us to book venues here. Most of them want minimum three, but mostly four piece bands. Um the uh rationale behind it I was told is that they just have a bigger sound and I said uh I just need subs we sound plenty big let me tell you um so it's been a little tricky getting our foot in the door in venues so we started with home concerts um and a big part of that was to uh take donations to raise money for the video that we we just watched um and then we transfer those to the backyard because I have the perfect yard space and I live in the arts district in our city People love live music here. So I invited the neighbors to come over for a free show. Um, and those went really well, so much so that I'm going to try to establish as an official venue this year and offer the space to other artists like ourselves that are solos and duos who want to come test out their uh, performance. That's yeah. That's really yeah. Cool. And then there's a few venues in the city that were taking two pieces. One of them uh, changed management, so they canceled all remaining gigs. So that was the Fat Badger. We played there once. We had a second book gigged and they canceled all live performances and went um, back into like kind of a club mode. So they have DJs and they aren't booking artists. Um, and we played at Cloud9 Live a few times. We're just waiting to hear back, hopefully have a March show there. And then there's um, probably, I guess, the most sought after venue to play in is Revival Music Room. We did our music video premiere for Dreams of You there. Um, we asked if we could just use the space and said we would fill it. And that's what we did. And so, yeah, we had our big premiere party there. Um, and we're hoping maybe in the future we can play there. But right now, because we're two piece, it's, it's four pieces only um, for weekend slots at that venue. So fingers crossed keep chipping yeah, away and see if he'll let us in. But yeah, uh, we love live, live stuff. Like, you know, I, I told you I didn't perform for 16 years, so it's been like, um, paralyzing fear and it's, it's been a long journey, but after the first couple of shows, it's like, I'm like, I'm missing it right now. Right. Like I'm obsessed with doing it. I'm like, let's go. And it, it's just, there's something about, um, I guess like in the past, my performances were classical songs or musical theater songs and it was, or cover songs and it was always someone else's work. And there's something about singing your own songs, which, which you put a lot of a passion and soul and fire into, you know, into the, I love singing outside where you can just like send it, you know, it's like carried on the airwaves across the, across the neighborhood. I have people come by, they're like, we heard a female voice singing six blocks away come in, you know? Um, and so, yeah, it's just, it's, it's an incredible feeling. So the hope is to definitely keep doing live. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I love that. Um, yeah. Making me want to go busking again, actually. I've not busked. Do it. Do it. Yeah, I should do. Um, so yeah, that's cool. So do you know how this uh, podcast goes? Can you, can you feel that in the air? Something devilish? Oh, oh gosh. 
Well, you have a look on your face, so yes. <laughs> it's the new ice ball. Right? Quick fire five. Okay. Okay. These are the rules. What are the rules? You got 15 seconds, no more, no less. Well, no more. <clears throat> Answer any uh, these five questions. Okay. If you don't answer them within 15 seconds, you'll be banished to hell for the eternity. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, I worked really hard to stay out of hell, so I'll, I'll do my best. And your, your music will all be deleted off Spotify as well and <laughs> all streaming platforms. Um, so, oh, gosh. Question one is, uh, what is your favorite song of all time? Favorite song of all time? Um, oh, jeez. Uh, Long Train Running, Doobie Brothers? I don't know. I have, nice. like, so many, but that's definitely top five. Okay. Question two. If you could see any artist live, um, who would you pick, dead or alive? Oh, Whitney Houston, for sure. For Look. sure. That woman sings with, like, her whole being, right? Just, like, rattles out of her. So, anyways, sorry. Great. If you had, if you could see any uh, new artist spotlight playlist artist live, who would you go and see? Oh, my gosh. Any, oh... There's so many. Um, Liz. Love it. After uh, party, right? After party. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We had on here as well. Also great. the show, but but after party. Okay, sorry. Um, but don't be. Um, question four is, um, who is your favorite of Henry VIII's wives? <sighs> well, I guess Mary. Right? Yeah, She's the one. She, yeah. Okay, there were like three Anne's. Hold on. <laughs> Although Anna Bolin, she had that go she had it going on, right? Like she went out with a bang. Maybe it was Anne. It was the last one that but she had her fun on the way out the door, right? So, anyways, with the cull peppers, I think it was Anna Bolin. But yeah. Okay. I've been over 15 seconds. Oh, but I answered before my explanation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh -oh. that's um, and question five is, um, if you could spend a day with anybody um, that you've discovered on New Art Spotlight, who would you spend the day with? Oh, I can only pick one. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think William. William Lovett. Yeah. I just guy. really want to like have a have a chat with that guy. Yeah. Yeah, I've had a chat with that guy. I'm like face to face. Well, yeah, it was, it was screen to screen, but it was still... Yeah. 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 I just feel like he he's just always going to have like a good vibe. It's going to be like a breath of fresh air and a ray of sunshine, you know? So. He was so positive when I had a chat with him. Yeah, he was amazing. Right, yeah. Yeah, top guy. Um, um, so uh, before you say goodbye, what is next for Synthetic Bond? Where are we going? Um, well, we are just a couple of tracks away from our third album, Dark Side of Your Love. That album's like, do you want to know what's on it? Waiting, Manic Mind. It's about like kind of the seedier, like harder parts, you know, betrayal, lust, um, and I, unmet expectations like in relationships. So it's it's a little bit steamy and a little bit more aggressive and, and vulgar, I guess, if you will. Um, so that one, that album, we have one more track after Drive All Night and then Dark Side of Your Love album track will come out later this spring. Um, hoping to do more live shows, like I said, uh, kind of have some conversations in the works and setting some things up. We're going to try to do like Instagram live stream concerts as well. So some of our friends, you know, around the world can also watch. Um, and then, yeah, uh, hopefully in summer, look at maybe starting production on a new video if we can get more funding. So yeah, cause I would really, I mean, we make our own videos, but there's something about like having the creative process removed from you and somebody coming in with this fresh vision and just telling you we're doing this. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, I like that. Yeah. It's yeah. Really nice working with others as well, isn't it? Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been, everything's just, I feel very blessed. It's been an incredible journey, incredible experience. Um, yeah. And yeah, then some collabs. About it today. It's been really uh, interesting to hear you talk about it all. And it's been so nice to hear that, um, I think you're where you need to be in life. Do you know what I mean? You yes. Found, you found that home in the music, the Brad, everything that you're doing with the community. And um, yeah, it sounds amazing. It sounds like a real, it sounds like even a good run. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very thankful. I'm thankful for NOS. Like you guys, this community, you know, I watched it skeptically for eight months, you know, after being burned on Submit Hub. I'm like, what is it? Well, I watched Ed, right, talking about it, but it's been... Oh my gosh, like I probably would have quit if I had not found it. 
just changed my whole life, told me all the things I was doing wrong that I shouldn't have been and all the things I was doing right. And just lots of beautiful, beautiful friendships like from around the world have come out of it. People I hope one day to be like, hey, I'm coming there and I want to see you live and things like that. And and yeah, just just kind of like a, a romance. I feel like I'm in this like whirlwind romance this past couple of years and it's beautiful. Like just come full circle for me, I guess, you know? Yeah, I love that. And yeah. it's been nice to have so have this time to reflect on it. And um, yeah, and all the best for the future. I'll keep an yeah, eye on it. Yeah, thank you, Wilco. Yeah. You too. I can't wait to hear this new song. Yeah, I know. Oh, I'm having a nightmare with that at the moment. But... No, I want to hear it. I can't wait. So yeah. Maybe maybe you can give me like a little, you know, a little VIP pre-listen, just like a sample. Maybe. Maybe. I kind of, but no pressure. I'll, I can be patient and wait too, but I'm excited. I'm excited I to hear. To. I love your music as well. So, you. Um, uh, so yeah, thank, thanks for coming on. We're, and thank everybody, thank you for listening. We'll see you all next for time. for having us. He's out. Yeah. New, new, new artist spotlight podcast.